Welcome to Ararat Healthcare and Child Cost Learning Centre, your one-stop solution for IELTS, OET, CBT and OSCE training, as well as uh, recruitment to achieve your dream to be a registered nurse in the UK. To enhance your chances of passing your OSCE on the first attempt, please visit our website on www.charcoslearningcentre.com to register and book our unique OSCE portal consisting of videos, reading material and quizzes. This registration not only gives you access to the portal, you will also receive five complimentary online classroom style sessions and a mock OSCE test. So don't delay your achieving your dreams any longer and sign up now. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Seema Balian. And today we will be discussing about a new scenario that has been added in the adult OSCE. The name of the scenario is bowel assessment. Bowel assessment station has been added to one of the skills station. This is going to be a silent station and you will be getting eight minutes to complete the station. You will need to complete a Bristol stool chart accurately and then you will need to write a bowel assessment care plan using your findings. You will need to use a black pen to complete the station. Make sure your handwriting is clear and legible and that you complete all the aspects. Please do not rewrite, overwrite or cross out if possible. A single cross with your initial on the top is accepted if you need to cross out anything. Now, the Bristol stool chart, as we have discussed, that this is one of the aspect or the tool that you will need to uh, use in order to complete the station. Bristol stool scale is a diagnostic medical tool designed to classify the form of human feces into seven categories. It was developed at the Bristol Royal Infirmary <clears throat> as a clinical assessment tool in 1997. It is widely used as a research tool to evaluate the effectiveness of the treatment for various diseases of the bowel, including constipation, diarrhea, and irritable bowels. <coughs> now, as we have said that the Bristol stool chart classifies the, uh, the feces into seven different types. Now, these seven types, they range from a very hard stools to a very watery and liquidy school, stools. So the first type is a separate hard lumps like nuts, which are difficult to pass. The second type is a sausage shaped, but a lumpy hard stools. The type three is like a sausage, but with cracks on the surface. The type four is like a sausage or snake or smooth, and which is like an average stool types. Type five is soft blobs with clear cut edges. And type 6 is fluffy pieces with ragged edges and mushy stools or diarrhea-like stools. And the seventh type is watery diarrhea-like stools. So as you can see, the range goes from very hard stool to a watery diarrhea kind stool. What can you expect in the OSCE exam? In the OSCE, you will be provided with a scenario and an image of one of the stool type. Most likely, the stool types will be either from a constipated, which is the type 1 or type 2, or diarrhea, which can be type 6 or type 7 type of stools. You will need to identify the stool types as per the Bristol stool chart and write a plan of care accordingly. In order to achieve full marks, you will need to identify a minimum of five aspects of care. Now, majority of the time in the exam, you are going to get either a type 1 or type 2 stool or you are going to be getting a scenario which will sh be showing a type 6 or a type 7 type of a stool. Now, as we have discussed, the type 1 and type 2 are going to be a hard stool which are going to be associated with constipation. So, when you are writing the plan of care for constipation, you need to make sure that you are considering the possible causes of constipation and they can be medication or other um, other reasons 
um, which you will have to explore, uh, which can be the reasons for the constipation. You have to offer dietary advice to the patient, such as increasing fiber, uh, fruit, vegetables, or fluids in their diet. You will have to propose obtaining a prescription for laxative. You will also need to consider dehydration and you will need to, uh, to encourage the patient to take or increase their fluid intake. Physical activity or physical movements are also going to be encouraged wherever possible. You will need to encourage the patient to not to ignore the urge for defecation. You will need to promote a positive toilet habits such as maintaining privacy, positioning, breathing exercises, and spending time on going to the toilet. You will also need to recognize the need to continuously um, assessing the bowel habits and also making sure that the constipation is cleared or you need to be assessing that it is not getting any worse. Now, the other type of scenario that you can get is of diarrhea, as we have discussed. So this is going to be from the rule type 6 or 7. You will need to consider the possible causes of loose stool, such as they can be an infective causes like food poisoning. They can be uh, acute, uh, it can be a constipation, but with an overflow. It is also possible that the loose stools are because of the medication such as antibiotics. It is also possible that there is some other healthcare acquired infection such as norovirus or C. diff or also malabsorption. So these are some of the causes which can be of diarrhea. And in this station, you will need to identify the cause for the diarrhea. You will need to also consider infection control measures if the cause of diarrhea is due to infection. And the infection control measures can be patient's isolation and sending the sample for culture, stool sample for the culture. You will need to offer dietary advice to the patient where you will need to advise to reduce the intake of fruits and vegetables. You will need to propose obtaining a prescription for anti-motility medication if there is a suspected non-infectious cause. You will also need to keep a close eye for dehydration and you will need to encourage the patient to increase their fluid intake. Since a patient is suffering with diarrhea and will be going to the toilet plenty of time, it is important that you consider the perianal skin integrity. Promoting positive toilet habits such as privacy, positioning, close proximity to the toilet or commode and spending time going to the toilet are also going to be required. And last but not the least, you will need to recognize the need of continuous assessment of bowels and the patient to make sure that the patient is not deteriorating and is not getting dehydrated. So these are going to be some of the aspects which are going to be completing your station for bowel assessment. I hope that you have found this video useful in understanding this station and you would be able to now complete this station using the information which is there in this video. So thank you very much and good luck.